We are now streaming uh, live on uh, Facebook. We want to uh, welcome all who are uh, joining us on our on our final evening of our summer revival 2022. Uh, we have had a fantastic uh, series on this week. A fantastic summer revival. Um, I want to uh, say a personal thank you to uh, all the ministers uh, and their congregations that have uh, participated uh, in this summer revival. Uh, all who have uh, visited with us from uh, sister congregations from all over the country. Uh, I want to say thank you. Uh, we're going to uh, uh, say a final thank you at the uh, end of our uh, revival on tonight. On Sunday, Brother Rodney Knopf, he kicked us off uh, with publishing the word of the Lord on Sunday, uh, coming from the book of Acts chapter 13. On Monday night, uh, Brother Stanley Hubbard, uh, preach to us from Acts chapter 8, verses 1 through 4. Uh, what happens when everyone leaves but the preachers? Uh, reminding us that every member has a ministry and we ought to be telling someone about Jesus. Last night, uh, Brother Thomas Fitzgerald blessed our souls as he talked to us about orders to go. Uh, runners, take your mark, uh, get set, and go. Um, and tonight, uh, we're going to um, hear from Brother Faith Haygood. Uh, he's going to be coming to us uh, from the West Coast, uh, from uh, Compton, California, the West Side. He's going to be coming to us from the West Side. Um, and, and he is going to uh, bless us on tonight. On this evening, uh, Brother Philip St. James will uh, lead us in an opening prayer. Brother Emmanuel will lead us in a song. Uh, Brother Jesuel will read our scriptures. Uh, I will introduce our speaker and come back with final remarks on tonight. Uh, again, welcome to the final evening of our summer revival. Uh, pray that this has been inspiring to you uh, as we uh, uh, wrap up this series on tonight. Uh, please take these lessons uh, and, and allow them to sink in your spirit. Uh, if you missed any of those, uh, you can go back and watch on our Facebook page as well uh, as our YouTube page under Lehigh Valley Church of Christ. Um, uh, please go back, share these lessons with your family uh, and with your friends. Psalm 34, which is one of my favorite texts in the Bible, says that I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I'm going to ask Brother Philip St. James, if he would, uh, to give us our opening prayer on tonight. There you go. I'm going to give a shout out to Faith. I haven't seen him in a long time. I sent some in his DMs. I ain't heard from him yet. So looking forward to hearing him tonight. But uh, everybody, let's, let's uh, join our hearts and minds together in prayer. Father God, we're so grateful for the success of this uh, summer revival. Father, we're, we're so grateful for uh, the, the ministers, the brothers that have brought the word. Uh, it's been so encouraging this week. Uh, the, the theme is encouraging. Uh, you know, the, the first two letters in the gospel are go. And as we go, Father, we need your guidance. We just ask, Lord, that you continue to show us acceptance as we continue to navigate life with you in it. Ask, Lord, that you continue to allow us to always say the right words as we go, to be encouraging to each other. Thank you, Father, for 
for blessing us and we've uh, and blessing one another as we demonstrate your love to those who don't know you. Uh, we thank you for always showing your presence, Father, in our lives. And we ask, Lord, that as we go, as we follow this theme, we ask, Lord, that you are with us every step of the way. And as we go, that you will allow yourself to be seen in us and not and not us. And, and allow you, Lord, to, to, to lead the way, order our steps through your word. Let us, allow us to trust you. And, and we ask, Lord, that you protect us as we go and continue to fill us with hope and blessings and and, and just allow uh, us to, to, to be able to spread uh, your gospel as we uh, navigate the, 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 the cities and the, the, the places that we uh, are frequent. Uh, allow us not to be afraid, Lord, to say your word, to speak your word, and to let people know who you are and how you've changed our lives. Father, we thank you for always uh, being a faithful God to us. Uh, we thank you for offering us victory over death and for being more powerful than um, any of our transgressions or any temptations that we have, Father. We thank you for your grace. And we just, Lord, just love you so much and, and grateful for Jesus who died on the cross for us. We ask, Lord, that uh, this evening's lesson uh, will be just as, uh, as powerful and, and as encouraging as the rest. And we're grateful, Father, for faith being here this evening. We thank you for him, this brother. He's, he's touched so many lives, Lord, and we're just grateful for him, for him being here. Yes, Lord, that you bless this evening and the words that are being said and allow us to, to apply them in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. And um, happy to, to be here and, and serving uh, this evening. Uh, hopefully you all are uh, excited. This is, you know, yes, definitely. It's our last night with some great speakers. I'm going to lift us up. Uh, and help and you will join me in our song uh, this evening. Uh, it's Give Me the Bible. And we need the Bible and it will be great uh, this evening. I can't hear you, um, but I know the uplifting uh, your voice. Uh, and so uh, once again, we're uh, as we tonight, we're just gonna do two verses of this song uh, and then uh, we'll, we'll, we'll turn back over to Brother Dean. So give me the Bible and we'll do two verses of this. Give me the Bible, star of black is flame, to cheer the wonder on the tempest toss. No sky that radiant, peaceful beaming since Jesus came to save the lost. Give me the Bible. Holy man, thy light shall guide me in thy narrow way. Precept and promise, law and love combining, till I vanish in eternal day. Give me the Bible when my heart is broken, when sin and grief have so with fear. Give me the precious words by Jesus. Spoken. Hold a face lamp to show my Savior near. Give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy will guide me in thy narrow way. Precept and promise, law and love combining. Till night shall vanish, eternal day. Thank you, Brother Rupert. At this time, Brother Jesuel uh, will read our scripture. Uh, good evening, everyone. I will be reading from Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. I repeat, Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find the rest of your soul for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That was Matthew 11, 20 through 30. I repeat, Matthew 11, 20 through 30. Thank you, Brother Jezreel, for the reading uh, of our scripture on tonight. Again, welcome everyone to the final evening of our Summer Revival 2022. 
the gospel begins with go. Uh, if you uh, are able and can, please share this on your Facebook page. Um, invite your families and friends at this time so uh, that they can get a word from the Lord on tonight. It is my privilege and my honor to introduce to you uh, Minister Fate Haygood. Uh, Brother Fate uh, grew up at the Figueroa Church of Christ under the preaching of Dr. R. N. Hogan, uh, Dr. Calvin Bowers, and Brother Woody Morrison. Uh, among his mentors in the faith are uh, Brother Kenwood DeVore, Dr. Richard Barclay, Brother Chuck Ferguson, and his mom, uh, Sister Irene Faygood. Hey, good. I'm sorry. Uh, Brother Fate worked as a public school teacher for 15 years. He has also worked as a youth minister for the Compton Avenue Church of Christ, as a youth minister, associate minister, pulpit minister, and the ministering evangelist for uh, the East Side Church of Christ. Uh, Brother Fate planted the Metropolitan Church of Christ, where he is currently uh, the minister of that congregation. Uh, Faith saw a need to reach out to people which may have been turned off or uh, turned away by the customary methodology in some churches of Christ. He is often heard to say we are reaching out to those whom others in our fellowship may miss. Uh, this movement is not anti-establishment, but instead a pro evangelist. Uh, Brother Fate uh, is uh, married. Uh, he has an anniversary coming up. If I'm reading this correctly, uh, he is married to Sister Myra Haygood. Uh, their anniversary is coming up on August 16th. Uh, and I believe if, uh, if this is correct, it, it will be their 36th wedding anniversary. Uh, they have two children, Destiny, a uh, graduate of Abilene Christian University. Uh, she spent some time with us a few summers ago. And Faith Haygood IV, he's a graduate of Pepperdine University. Uh, Faith loves his family and he keeps them as a priority in his life. Uh, I'm so glad to uh, be able to introduce uh, Brother Faith Haygood to you on tonight. Uh, you will not be disappointed uh, by the word of the Lord as he delivers it. Again, if you are visiting with us, please put the name of your congregation uh, in our chat line, either on Facebook Live or here in uh, the Zoom room. Uh, we want to shout you out uh, at the end of our service on tonight. So without further ado, uh, I will... Uh, allow Brother Faith to come in his own way uh, to deliver the word of God to us on tonight. Brother Faith. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Um, I am in, I'm excited to be here. <laughs> praise the Lord. Uh, good to see Brother Bean. Amen. Look like he's in good health. Praise God. <laughs> Good to see Brother St. James and Carol and praise God. I haven't seen them in years. Man, yeah. how you doing, man? Man, I am doing well. Praise God, I am doing well. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I just, I remember uh, meeting Phil, but the funny, the funniest thing, I, and I, it may not be that funny to him, but it was hilarious. <laughs> when I was at his house, we were riding down the street. I don't know what street it was. I was there doing some kind of maybe a revival or something at the church where he was. We were riding down the street, and lo and behold, look up on a billboard, and whose shining big face do I see? <laughs> Philip said, I was like, wow, that was just hilarious to me. Um, so praise God. Uh, I'm glad to be here with the, um, I think it's the Lehigh Valley Church of Christ. Amen? Amen. The Lehigh Valley Church of Christ. <clears throat> and I hope that I can say some things that will be encouraging to you, that you can feel revived. I do solicit your prayers. I uh, received uh, uh, just some uh, not so good news today, so I'm I'm not really in my best of mind. Uh, but the word of God must be spoken and it must be preached. 
Uh, for this is the day the Lord has made. Uh, we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. And so just magnify the Lord with me. And we can exalt his name together. We can praise through our pain. Um, and we can praise through our hardships. And we can praise through our heartaches. Uh, and so we will just get on in and start doing what God says do. Now, I looked at the, uh, uh, the, the preachers who were there before me. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I used to think Brother B was my friend. <laughs> but he's going to have me follow Hubbard <laughs> and Thomas Fitzgerald. I'm like, no, 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 no. In this lineup, I go first. I'm first. Then you bring the heavy hitters on. <laughs> so praise God. Uh, well, amen. If, well, there's only one good thing about that. If I don't do that well, if you think, think it was horrible, at least you got two good sermons to go back and listen to. Because I listened to both of them and they did a fantastic job. <laughs> praise God. I am the minister at the Metropolitan Church of Christ here in Carson, California. Uh, I live in uh, a Compton, California. Uh and I am excited to be with you on today. I'm going to be uh, reading from, I want to thank the brother uh, who read into our hearing, uh, Matthew 11, uh, verse 28 through 30, which will be our text for today. What a fine job he did in reading the passage of scripture. The Bible says in Matthew 11, <clears throat> verse 28, come unto me, all you who labor, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, Jesus says. Take my yoke upon you and learn uh, from me or of me, for I am gentle and lowly or meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. Why, Jesus, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The theme of this Revival has been go, G-O, go, the first two letters in gospel, go. Well, we as Christians are called um, to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature in Matthew, in Mark 16, uh, that he that believes and is baptized shall be saved, and he that does not believe shall be condemned. And we are convinced of this in our hearts, that uh, uh, people must hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we all know that the gospel, at least the first elements of the gospel, the fundamental principles of the gospel found in 1 Corinthians 15, uh, tell us that the gospel which he preached and which saves us consists of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we all understand that the obedience to that gospel comes through faith, repentance, baptism. For Romans 6, uh, Paul tells us that when we are uh, come unto Christ, we are baptized into Christ, then we are baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried uh, by baptism into death, that like Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. And so we see that the obedience to the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is found in the gospel of Jesus Christ, uh, is found in baptism, where we obey the death, we obey the burial, we obey the resurrection. But then the question becomes, if we know that <clears throat> as Christians, if we know that if people don't come to Jesus, they will uh, spend eternity. Uh, I don't know where you land theologically, but I'm still an old time preacher. I still believe in stuff like heaven and, and hell. Uh, that 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 if if you don't obey the gospel, um, the only invitation you have is an invitation to hell. And 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 if you don't obey the gospel, uh, you can't see the Lord's face in peace. And if you don't obey the gospel, uh, when you stand before God, you you won't have the grace of Jesus Christ covering uh, you and, and, and accessing the blood of Jesus. I'm just old school and I believe, and if we believe that still, the question then becomes, why? Why aren't we more uh, uh, vibrant in our, in our evangelism, more vibrant in telling people 
about Jesus. And I believe part of it is we don't really, we don't really understand because we often have not uh, experienced uh, the refreshing of God ourselves. That, that sometimes the reason we don't go is because we, we kind of feel like hypocrites. <laughs> We kind of feel like we're, we're asking them to come to something that we don't really believe ourselves. And so I want to remind you, I want you to, to remind you of the invitation that you receive and that because you have received and accepted that invitation, that, that then you have then been commissioned to then invite others into the same relationship that you have. I'm just going to talk about a refreshing invitation. We want to go so they can come. We want to go so they can come. We've already come. We've already, uh, uh, this is revival. So I, I'm, I'm assuming that we have all obeyed the gospel. I'm assuming we've already believed and, and trusted Jesus for the salvation of our souls. I, I'm, I'm believing that we've already been buried in water for the remission of our sins. The, the question then is, is, is where is our refreshing that we want to invite people? Can I tell you something about a good party? Now I know I know y'all good Christian folks on here, you, Jesus lovers. You you ain't <laughs> you ain't never been to a party, let alone a good party. So so we just gonna pretend. <laughs> we gonna pretend you've gone to the turn up <laughs> and got turned. <laughs> we just gonna play like it. Now for those of y'all, praise God, who've been to a party before, you will know uh, that in parties. Uh, 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 it, it's a party. <laughs> you got people waving their hands in the air and waving them like they just don't care. And, and folk in one corner saying, party over here. And, and somebody over there said, party over there. And, and then and they started shouting, hey, hey, hey. And everybody's bragging about how good the, the, the Kool-Aid is, praise God. <laughs> and they're, they're bragging about how good the hors d'oeuvres are. And, and the guys are looking and seeing how beautiful the ladies are. And the, and the ladies are looking at how muscular the men are. And they're all just having a great time, a good old party. Now, the next day, after you turned up, after you've gotten over your, your, your Kool-Aid late, <laughs> your Kool-Aid headache, praise God. You can't wait to tell somebody about the turn up. Girl, whoo child, you should have been there. Girl, had you been, whoo, honey, listen, listen to me. You can't wait. Well, I think sometimes the reason we don't tell folk about God is because we missed the party. We, we got the invitation, we signed it, we did the initiation stuff, we stood in line, but then when we got there, we never really party. We're kind of standing outside. And I want to invite you to remember that you are, are a participant in the greatest party that has ever been, the Lord's church being a Christian. So when Jesus here, as he closes actually a long uh, uh, teaching uh, there in Matthew 11, uh, a very uh, uh, sobering teaching there in Matthew 11. He comes and he says, come unto me. He talks to them about uh, the Pharisees and, 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 and the heavy loads. He says, come to me. Because I can give you first, verse 28, a refreshing relationship. Come to me. Jesus says, come to me. Now, I want you to notice this is very important. He says, come to me. Part of the reason Jesus was always so controversial is because he would say, come to me. He was not like the other uh, 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 rabbis and, 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 and didascalos and, and teachers during that time who invited people to, to come to God. Uh, he did, but, but here he says, come to me. Jesus places himself in the position of Yahweh, come to me, and I will give you rest. It's an unthinkable, unthinkable uh, invitation in the mouth of what Benny thought was just a man, come to me. It was blasphemy for him to position himself as God. He says, come to me. 
come to me. And I love this because come was an open invitation. Come to me. He, uh, Spurgeon says he drives none away. He calls them to himself. His favorite word is come, not go to Moses, come unto me. To Jesus himself we must come by personal trust, not to doctrine, not to ordinance, not to ministry. We are to come first, but to the personal Savior, come to me. And I think sometimes, and, and I, you know, uh, I've been in a church, uh, I was baptized around uh, 1900 and uh, 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 70, 69, 70, 71, right along 72, right in those, right in that area somewhere. Yes, I'm old. Yeah, this, this is all real. This this is not me just on the new uh, 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 Mac Daddy uh, gray beard. Uh, <laughs> no, this is real. Praise God. But I remember coming to Jesus. And I remember many times in when I was evangelizing people, drawing them to the church. Come to the church of Christ. It's the only church you can read about in the Bible. Come to the church of Christ. Our doctrine is right. Come to the church of Christ. Our singing is right. Come to the church of Christ. Our, our liturgy on Sundays is right. Come to the church of Christ because it's the right church. And I'm not, and I, I'm old school now, so I'm not saying, praise God. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with, 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 with telling folks about the church. But what I am saying is this, is that our first invitation should not be to the body, but to the head. Our first invitation ought to be to him. Come to me. Jesus invites the weary to come to him. Come to me, all you who are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He, he calls those who are burdened. He calls those who, who, who need to see him uh, who need relief, they need, they, they needed something beside for themselves. Come to me, all you who, who labor. According to Carson, labor implies the burdens we take on ourselves. And the heavy laden implies burdens others put. All, come unto you all who, are, who labor and are heavy laden. Sometimes you, you have burdens because of your own stuff. People have burdens because of their own stuff. Sometimes it's because of their own mistakes. Sometimes it's because of their own sufficiencies. Sometimes they just got problem on top of problem. He says, come to me. Some people come to him, need to come to him because they have burdens other folk put on. And of course, an allusion here to the pharisaical burdens of the scribes, the Pharisees and the Sadducees who had laid heavy burdens upon the Jewish people or made the law even heavier than it. He says, come to me. I don't care whether or not you have some kind of personal burden, some type of religious burden. Jesus, come to me. And I think sometimes we have come to him scared, scared of hell. And just, just FYI, be scared of hell because hell is scary. But sometimes we need to remember we're coming to Jesus because we got stuff going on, praise God got stuff going on, and people have stuff going on. Sometimes we're so religious, we only are concerned about whether or not a person believes a certain way, and, and we, we put Jesus in our little religious box, but Jesus didn't put himself in that little religious box. Jesus, come to me who? Not, not come to me, you who are struggling with, with some deep theological concept. No, no, no. He says, come to me. You, you got problems? Come to me. Come to me. And I think once we start locating Jesus as not an answer to religious stuff, but as the answer to every problem, the answer. What is the answer to division in, in the world? It's Jesus. What is the answer to, to, to gender problems in the world? It's Jesus. What, what is the answer to the plight in, in, in lower income areas? It's Jesus. What is the answer to the plight of those who are overcome with the burdens of riches? It's Jesus. Every problem, the answer to every problem is Jesus. The, the question is irrelevant. You got a problem, answer is Jesus. Can't get along with your wife, you ain't gonna know Jesus. Husband tripping, the answer is Jesus. Kids tripping, answer is Jesus. What's the answer? The answer is Jesus. Because he says, come unto me, 
all, it says, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now, if I can just give you a, 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 little, a little something, just show you I got a little education. This idea of inviting the weary, uh, it's, it's what's called a participial phrase. Um, and if the suggestion is this, is those who are becoming weary through constantly struggling and toiling. It's, it's the idea that, that my life becomes characterized by my struggle. If I, could, if I could illustrate it to you, one thing I love about black women, and I love black women, praise God for black women, but black women are trip also. Let me show you something. Black women <laughs> have, <laughs> what the hell? Oh, now listen, I lost your sisters. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna say it's nothing bad. I ain't gonna say nothing bad. I ain't gonna say nothing bad. And, I'm not, and, and if it's some white, some white sisters on there too, I ain't telling on y'all. This ain't nothing nobody don't know. Here's what sisters have done. Sisters have minimized a compliment to one word. One sister will walk in, they won't say, girl, you got on a nice dress. They're like, dress, hair, nails. Oh, I see you polka dots. Well, <laughs> you become defined by this one word. Well, what Jesus is saying here is sometimes people become defined by their struggle. Oh, oh I see you lies. Oh, I see you broke. Oh, I see you struggling. They just become defined by that one word. That's what he, that's what he calls these burdens, these weary people. These people who are struggling, those who are weary. They become defined by their stuff. And Jesus, those are the folk we need to call to Jesus. I ain't gonna lie to you. Hope the preacher's on here too. A preacher, you need to help me with this because I was I was brought up in a church uh, that I'm that 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 where, where where I knew how to talk to people and bring people out of out of wrong religions and I'm good at that I know how to do that stuff problem is is more folk today that don't have religion at all they need us to be able to talk to them about stuff and what Jesus would tell me what Jesus would preach to this preacher is he would say faith you missed it man I wouldn't just call the folk who are wrong religiously I'm calling all people every struggle drugs I don't care what they got. It's Jesus. It's me. And you start calling them to that, calling them to me. Before you church them, Christ them. Those who are weary. And he says in burden, this was called passive. This is a, this is a passive. Uh, he says, he says this idea of being overloaded like a beast of burden. It, it's, it's like putting enough on a small lamb. It's putting the load of a bull on a small lamb. It's, it's that it's the lamb can't take it. The lamb can't take it. Now the problem is the lamb's prideful. So the, the lamb like to pretend. It, it pretend, or or, or the, the lamb's got real strong legs. So so if it really tries, it can carry this burden. The problem is he's a ticking time bomb. Ticking time bomb. His life is an accident waiting to happen. And everybody knows it. It's gonna fall over in a minute. And we clap, 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 clap because they made it like 10 feet. But well, we know foot 11 or 12, they're gonna fall. Jesus says, come, come to me, come to me. Well, the question is why are people burdened? Well, it's because we all want the same thing. We all want to be refreshed. We all want rest. Don't you want rest? I know I do. And I've been a Christian a long time. And somebody just wants to rest. I want to just chill. I want some rest. Jesus says, fate, Bean, Lehigh, Philadelphia, Boston, Compton, Texas. I, I'm the rest. It's just me. So then he says, I'm inviting you to a relationship with me. And I'm and I'm, what I love about Jesus. Is Jesus does not call the folk everybody else called. Jesus, Jesus didn't call everybody got together. He doesn't come to me all y'all that got together. You know, those who add to my life, those who, who can make me better. 
I don't, I don't need anybody bringing me down. I need to cut off those. No, no, Jesus said, bring me the folk who jacked up, messed up, struggling, hurt, depressed. Bring me the drug addict. Bring me the alcoholic. Bring me the homeless person. Bring them to me. Hallelujah. So, so, so he, he calls us to take, he says, come unto me, all you that labor and a heavy lady. He says, I will give you rest. This word rest is, means refreshing. And the idea of rest and refreshing, it means the idea of being re-energized. Jesus ain't talking about death yet, meaning, meaning a cessation of life. But Jesus means this, I'm, you're going to come to me, and it's going to be like, oh, wow, yes. He says, that's what I can give you, but you got to come to me. Because what will happen is, if you get in this refreshing relationship with Jesus, he will give you a refreshing redirection. So you've been, you've been working out things one way. Jesus wants people to work them out another way. So the gospel we take to people, it's an upside down gospel. The gospel we take to people, it, it's not the gospel of, of prosperity. And, and it's not that gospel. And I'm, I'm not knocking Joel Osteen, believe it or not. I'm not knocking them dudes. What I'm telling you is that, is that, is that they're missing the point. And we miss it too. We just not as good. See, huh, glory to God. See, we like to knock those dudes. <laughs> bless, bless the name of Jesus. We like to knock them dudes, but sometimes they just better what they do than we are. I ain't knocking them. I ain't knocking them. I'm saying the mist. I'm saying the refreshing he has has nothing to do with, with some worldly investment, money, or, or power, or position. I'm saying it transcends that. I'm saying he's not giving you something you can get yourself by your own power. The reason you all jacked up is because you've been trying to work out your marriage. You've been trying to work out your job. And you've been trying to work out your depression. And you're trying to work out your issues or work out your struggle. And you're trying and trying. And you, you want to get, he's telling you, you can't do it. You need me. So I'm going to redirect that energy. So it's just coming to me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you refreshing rest. He says, take. Because when you come, I'm going to give you something. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly at heart, and you shall find rest. So take my yoke upon you and learn of me. This is a wonderful offer Jesus makes. This is what we tell people. Jesus is offering something, and it's a yoke. Don't get it twisted, y'all. It's a yoke. A yoke means a yoke, a yoke is something you work with. It's a yoke. The refreshing gives you, that's why I say it's a redirection. He's giving you a way to be successful as opposed to the way you had, which was killing you. And I, and I know, praise God, and I'm like that too. I waste my time on too many folk that don't want it. They don't want it. They don't want it. They don't want it. And I'm just beating my head. Oh, but you know, I just, if I tell them, I'm a, no, they don't want it. Jesus is not dealing with folk who, he says, listen, you realize that your struggle is, 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 is defining you? Jesus says, take my yoke. I'm going to re redirect you, man. I'm going to give you a refreshing redirection. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Take my yoke. This idea of the yoke, according to Adam Clark, Clark the ancient Jews commonly used the idea of a yoke to express someone's obligation to God. There was a, the yoke of the kingdom, the yoke of the law, the yoke of the commandments, the yoke of repentance, the yoke of faith and the general yoke of God. And then Jesus also talking about the yoke of the Pharisees. In this context, he's probably uh, 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 implying um, uh, the, the yoke of the Pharisees more directly, but, but, but in a general way, all yokes. He said, everything you yoked yourself up with before was the wrong yoke. Jesus is not telling you you're not gonna have a yoke. You're gonna have a yoke. You got, you got, some, you got some kind of yoke. I got a yoke, you got a yoke, everybody, everybody. Yoke, yoke, glory to God. You, everybody got a yoke. The only question is, is the yoke you're using effective to get you in the purposes of God? And the, when you talk to your friends and, and your associates, your, your neighbors, your relatives, and you see them struggle, it's because they got the wrong yoke. Get the wrong yoke. And so your job is to say, hey, listen, listen, we can redirect that. We can give you a refreshing redirection. We can redirect that. He says, so take my yoke upon you and learn of me. This word yoke, skola, we get our word school from. Take this idea of learning. Take, take my yoke 
and learn from me. This yoke, verse 29, put on animals for pulling heavy loads. It, it's a metaphor for the discipline of discipleship. But Jesus is not offering the yoke of the law. He's offering a different yoke. And, and it's not the same type yoke. The yoke is Jesus' yoke, not the yoke of the law. And the reason I keep repeat, repeating that is because sometimes, even in the body of Christ, what we will do is ecclesiastically, we will redefine the pharisaical yoke to make it look like the yoke of grace. I'm here to tell you, if you take poop and put it in a box and put a beautiful bow on it, it is still poop. The yoke of Jesus is not the law redone. No, 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 no. The yoke of Jesus is founded in the grace, mercy, and love of God, but it's still the yoke of discipleship. And it and it, the, the yoke of Jesus does not have some long check checklist. The yoke of Jesus asks for everything. Ask for all of you. Come unto me, all you that labor in heaven, I will give you rest. Then he, Jesus says, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Matthew 16, take up his cross and follow me. See, see, it's it's all for Jesus. So don't get it twisted. It is a yoke, but what it's not, it's not an ineffective yoke, which is going to have you burn. It's, it's not that yoke. Matthew 23, verse 3 and 4, he says, uh, all therefore whatsoever they bid you observe. He's talking about what the, what, what, the, what the Pharisees would do. He says, what they tell you observe and do, but don't do after their works, because they say they don't do. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born, to lay on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move one finger to help somebody. He, said, he says, that's not what I'm telling you. I'm not, I'm not setting up some, some hierarchical uh, situation uh, where, where you are under this long burden of something. No, no, no. I'm, I'm talking about changing life. I'm talking about redirection of your life. When someone looks at the yoke of Jesus from a distance, it's easy to get all kinds of wrong ideas about it. But when you have a yoke on you, when you have the yoke on you, when you've walked in the yoke, you all of a sudden, you, you understand it, how easy it is. See, can, can, I, can, I, can I just talk to you a little bit of, like an old boy from Compton? I know a lot, whole lot of drug addicts. Hold a whole lot of drug addicts. And that yoke is killing them. The problem is the yoke of drugs, it makes things, when you're on it, it makes everything seem wonderful. Until it lays the burden on you. When it starts laying the burden on you, it just destroys your life. See, 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 those yokes, all yokes of sin, all yokes of sin have sweetness at the front, but struggle on the end. Jesus' yoke is the opposite. He gives you a struggle up front. <laughs> Lord of God. And he leads you into sweetness. And it gets sweeter and sweeter and sweeter when you fall into this yoke. See, that's the kind of yoke you want to give to folk. That yoke, that yoke of Jesus. Finally, yes, finally. This is how y'all say, amen, preacher. Preacher, finally. This this when y'all shout, hallelujah, finally, preacher. But but then the, then the real Christian folks say, no, you got time? Preach on. We got an hour. Keep on preaching, the real folks. Keep on preaching. You ain't got to stop. Keep on preaching. <laughs> for my yoke is easy. So I'm, he says, for I am gentle and lowly at heart. For I'm gentle, I'm meek and lowly at heart. Who is Jesus? Why is his yoke? Why is his yoke easy? Why is his burden light? Because the yoke of Jesus is consistent with Jesus. Jesus is not like the Pharisees. Jesus never tell you to do something he had done already. He's not like the Pharisees. He won't lay a burden on you that he won't do twice as much for. But then he comes and he says, he says, but I'm easy and my burden is light. I want to start on just for a second before I close out. I want to say this to you, brothers and sisters. Sometimes I think we need a new Jesus. No, 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 no. I'm not saying a new Jesus. I'm saying the Jesus we have was the wrong Jesus sometimes. And we need to pick up this, this, this gentle Jesus. This Jesus who is meek and lowly at heart. This, this Jesus who, who sees what you're going through and feels it, who, 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 who invites you to come boldly to the throne of grace, to obtain mercy and find grace to help in your time of need. I, I think we need a new Jesus sometimes. I, I, think we, I think we don't have the Jesus of the Bible sometimes. I think sometimes we have 
have, have the Jesus, a, a Greek Jesus. But what I mean is this, is, is the Greco-Roman influences on theology or mythology sometimes inform us on how we see what we call deity, on, on what we see when we, when we talk about gods. And so we see gods as some kind of pernicious looking down to, 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 to hurt us and, 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 and they're just trying to put something on us and, and if we don't do right, he, but that's not who Jesus is, y'all. Have y'all have you ever read the book of Mark? Do, do you see how in the entire book of Mark, even to the to the very end, the disciples just never got it? They just never got it. I mean, the more he taught them, it looked like the dumber they got. And what did Jesus do? Did he throw them out? Did he, did he call them dumb and stupid and you just can't get it together? No. No. He pulled them aside and said, let me teach you. Or, or he was like a father. How can you have been with me this long and not know? Jesus is meek and lowly, y'all. I, I think we need that kind of Jesus. The kind of Jesus that we're not afraid when we mess up. The kind of Jesus that, and you go mess up, stop it. Yeah, you stop it. We, we're not even gonna discuss that. So, so that when you mess up, you can come to him and he says, you know what, I got you. I got you. And you know that before going in, not the kind of Jesus that, that has set up something, some, some, some high thing and you, you're always jumping. You're always jumping and you can't never reach it. You're always jumping and you never can reach it. You, you're always trying to do better and better. And you, you're addicted to being better and better. And you, you're always striving for better. That's not who Jesus is, y'all. Can, can, I, can I just give you some, something a little theological? Um, uh, when you talk about sin, remember sin uh, for, for us old school Church of Christ folks like me? Um, uh, for, all, for, for, for all have sinned and fallen what? Did y'all shout it out? Falling short, right? Falling short of the glory of God, right? Well, because that's the nature of sin. What sin does is sin puts you in a situation where you're always jumping for something you can't get. You're always jumping for something you can't get. That's what sin does. And that's the whole, that's the whole world is operating in sin. Our business is operating on sin. Our family sometimes operate on sin. We, we can't even get along with our kids because if our kid gets a B plus, he, he got to get an A. If, if they get a C plus, that wasn't good enough, he got to get a B. Why? Because he must always do better. And I get it. That's Americanism 101. I get it. It's just not Jesus. What Jesus wants to do is he wants us to be gentle. He wants us to be gentle. And once you can stop jumping and falling short, then you can fall into 2 Corinthians uh, uh, 5, verse 21. For God made him to be sin for us so that we might be made the righteous of God. So Jesus does the jumping. And the reason Jesus can do the jumping is because when he jumps, he's going to catch it. But we become righteousness in him. We become righteous because he is righteous. Not because we are righteous. We have righteousness put upon us. So we don't spend all our time striving after what we can't get. But instead, we strive to grow into him who is the head, even Jesus Christ. So every day, you, what am I striving for? I just want to become more like Jesus. How do I do it? By taking his yoke upon me and learning of him. For he is meek and lowly at heart. And when we give that level of gospel to people, the level that says, no, 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 I got a way out for you. Then, then things are going to happen. Let me close by saying, he goes from this refreshing redirection to a refreshing reminder in verse number 30. He says, because my yoke is easy. See, I remind us again, and my burden is light. And I believe the reason he's reminding us again because he wants us to have hope. He wants us to have hope. He doesn't want us to give up on our hope. Because sometimes when you're trying, and can we be real? When you're trying to live a Christian life, man, man, it might get tough on you. And sometimes you feel like, oh, I just can't make it now one more day. But Jesus says, no, 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 remember, my, bur my yoke is easy. My burden is light. You got this. You got this but you got to stay with me. Back in the day, way back in the day, I think it was on CBS. I think it was CBS. It may have been NBC. It wasn't ABC. I think it was CBS and NBC. There was a soap opera. I don't know if it's on. It might still be on, but it was called Days of Our Lives. Y'all remember that? <laughs> Days of Our Lives. And the favorite couple back in the day on Days of Our Lives 
was Bo Brady and Hope Williams. <laughs> there was this one episode where Bo was severely injured. You know how they do it in soap opera. He just all jacked up. He got, he got guards everywhere and stuff and because they just full of drum. And he's in this coma. As Bo lay in the hospital, his woman, Hope, sat by his side, praying and telling him how she couldn't live without him and how he could pull through if, if, he, if, if he just would hold on by her side, if he, she, she was just going to sit there by his side. As Hope spoke about the many things they made it through together, surprisingly, Bo could hear how they made it through the affairs and how they made it through the hardships and how they made it through the struggles and how they made it through the bad times. And he began to remember and recount some of the stories that Hope mentioned. Miraculously, Bo woke up before the end of the show. Of course he did. It shocked everyone because the doctors had said he wouldn't make it. Everybody thought he was going to die. As everyone celebrated, Bo was asked, what brought him back? Bo said he wanted to give up. He wanted to throw on the towel. He wanted to just sleep and not wake up again. He wanted this to be his last go around. But he couldn't because hope <laughs> wouldn't let him go. Brothers and sisters, I'm telling you today, the reason you can make it is because hope won't let you go. The Lord of hope will always hold you up. Hope won't let you go. You may be defined by your struggle. Jesus has come to me because hope won't let you go. You may be defined by your issues and problems. Don't worry about it. Hope won't let you go. You don't have to hang on in there yourself. He's got you. You just got to be faithful until the end because hope won't let you go. Hope is your anchor to your soul. No matter how bad things get, the, re the, the winds may blow and, and the storms may come and, and you may be rocking and rolling, but hope won't let you go because it's your anchor to the soul. Hope will keep you when you don't feel like you can make it and your esteem is low because hope the Bible says, make it not a shame. Hope will let you, won't let you go. My friend David Wilson likes to say, hope is the dope for your soul. When you can't get, get, get the kind of buzz you need in your life, you need to go start puffing on some hope. Glory to God. Folk gonna think you drunk. Folk gonna think you turnt. That's all right. Tell them, no, I don't do drugs. All I do is hope. <laughs> God. I don't do alcohol. I, I don't do a, a methamphetamine. I do hope because hope will never let me go. When you can start giving your friends hope, the reason they can't make it is because they lost their hope. But my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name, on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, get a little afraid. It's sinking sand. Y'all just hang in there. I'm telling you, God will refresh. He'll revive your church. Um, you, you get out there and you start giving folks a gospel that they can hold on to because you believe it. Amen. Because you believe it. And God will do exciting and mighty things. God bless you. And may he bless you real good. Amen. 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 Brother Faith, man, if I could jump up 10 feet and dunk a basketball, man. <laughs> Praise the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. If you were blessed by the word on tonight, just put in the chat line, I was blessed. I was blessed. And Brother Faith, you are still my friend. <laughs> uh, uh, when, when I, when I uh, was thinking about this meeting, I, I thought about a four by 100 relay. You had Brother Rodney Knopf who, who started it off. And the second leg was uh, uh, Brother Hubbard, my mentor, my father in the gospel. And Brother Thomas Fitzgerald ran the third leg and, and the anchor is Brother Fate hey good praise God. Uh, we are just so grateful. Uh, we want to go so they can come. 
And before you church them, Christ them. Oh, that's a powerful word on tonight. Yes, yes, what a powerful word. Thank you so much, uh, Brother Faith, my friend, my brother, for uh, sharing that word with us on tonight. Uh, as we close out this summer revival, I pray uh, that we have all been revived. And now we take these lessons and go out and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ to others. There's a dying world out there. There are people that need to be saved. And you just need to start within your own circle. If you have family members that need to become a Christian, uh, uh, lead them to the Lord. Uh, again, thank you for being a part of the Lehigh Valley Church of Christ Summer Revival. Uh, I want to thank all the ministers that participated. Uh, on tonight, we have Brother Spence from the Camden Church of Christ uh, that's watching us on Facebook. Uh, we want to pray for him and his health. Thank you, Brother Spence, for being with us on tonight. Uh, we also have Brother Douglas Good, uh, Goodman from the Annapolis Church of Christ in Maryland. Thank you, Brother Goodman. Uh, for being a mentor and a friend and a brother. Uh, uh, thank you so much for being with us on tonight. Uh, I want to thank all of our Christian brothers and sisters from all over the country uh, that took time out to join us uh, uh, during this summer revival. Uh, again, we had the Camden Church tonight, the Annapolis Church. Uh, of course, Brother Fate is the minister at the Metropolitan Church of Christ. Uh, we had the Brentwood Church of Christ from Milwaukee. Uh, Brother Antonio is joining us from the Philippines. Praise God. Uh, uh, East Laurel Church of Christ in Mississippi. Thank you. Uh, the Fishers Church of Christ in Indiana. Uh, Kingsley Terrace Church of Christ. And of course, uh, the Lehigh Valley Church of Christ. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your support uh, of this summer revival. Uh, I want to give a few shout outs. Uh, the first shout out I want to give out is to my daughter, Shauna, uh, who is so instrumental. Uh, the flyer that you saw out on the internet, on Facebook, on our website, uh, that was all uh, her doing such hard work. Uh, she does so much behind the scenes. Uh, she's my right hand when it comes to technology. I uh, really want to thank her for the flyer. Uh, her and my wife also worked with me, worked together for the theme of this gospel meeting. The gospel begins with go. Uh, and I want to thank my family for the strong foundation uh, that they have uh, given me in support of uh, our ministry. Again, thank you to all of the congregations for your support. We could not have done it uh, without you. Uh, the attendance on these four days were was so was was really uh, uh, a detriment uh, to not a detriment, but it was an encouragement uh, to uh, uh, you wanting the Word of God in your life. Uh, the Kingdom Church of Christ in Charlotte in the house. Uh, amen. We want to thank you uh, for being with us on tonight. Um, again, um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, if you want to go back and see these videos, please, uh, please like our Facebook page, Lehigh Valley Church of Christ, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Also, our YouTube page. Uh, under Lehigh Valley Church of Christ. Uh, in about the next 30 minutes, I'll have uh, this video ready to go. Uh, so you can go and share these messages with your friends. Uh, brother Faith, I love you, brother. Uh, I'm praying for you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Lord willing, uh, uh, when we come out that way, I want to spend some time with you in person. Uh, uh, thank you for that mighty word on, on tonight. At this time, we're going to um, uh, close out in a word of prayer uh, and, and uh, bid you good night. Uh, Lehigh Valley, uh, thank you so much again for your great support. Uh, good to see Sister Haygood as well uh, on the call tonight. Uh, Brother Monty Brooks, I see you, brother. Uh, thank you for your support. Uh, let us pray at this time. Merciful Father, we come to you on tonight. We thank you for being the great I am. 
Father, we are just so thankful for this series that you've allowed us as the Lehigh Valley Church of Christ to uh, be able to share uh, with our Christian brothers and sisters and to also share with those who don't know you in the pardon of their sins. Father, we thank you for these four great speakers who revived us on this week. We ask your blessings on Minister Rodney Knopf, on Minister Stanley Hubbard, on Minister Thomas Fitzgerald, and on Minister Fig Hager. Thank you, Father, for these wonderful men that brought the word of God to us on tonight. May our souls be refreshed. May our fires be reignited so that we may go out and spread the gospel to this lost and dying world. Bless us, Father, as we leave this meeting, but never from your presence. May you give us the deutimus and the exousia, the ability and the authority, Father, to go out and be spiritual farmers and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father, we love you. We adore you. We praise you. We honor you. We magnify you. And we send this prayer in the name of the one you call wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father and the prince of peace. His name is Jesus Christ. And we send this prayer in his name. All of God's children says.